right, welcome to Tom Out with Kevin. This is my guy, Chris Vereen. He is a MMA fighter. Um, he's 5 and 0 right now. You know, I looked you up and you, the, you uh, won a fight in 45 seconds. <laughs> so that's great. <laughs> but um, so the first question, Chris, I want to ask is hardest opponent you've ever faced? Ooh, uh, honestly, the hardest opponent was, I ever faced was probably, it's out of two people. One was one in my amateur career by the name of Aaron Crawford. A uh, very tall, lanky guy, and I hadn't dealt with someone of you know his 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 size and his length. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually fought that fight on one leg and one eye because like the first punch he threw, it connected and just busted up my eye. Oh my gosh, yeah. And then he had yeah, it's uh, it was bad to the point where they actually tried to stop the fight in between rounds because I couldn't see my eye was swelled up. And then he had some mean leg kicks, so like my leg was just out of it. Yeah. And I think it was maybe my my third pro fight, a guy named BJ Hurst, uh, all American wrestler. Um, I think he placed second place in Fargo in high school. And most people that are familiar with the wrestling scene, they know the caliber you have to be to go to Fargo mm -hmm. and compete on the wrestling scene. So probably out of one of those two, but I'd probably have to say BJ because it was on the the, the pro level. Right. right. So it was. A a pretty tough fight but um you know those are the tough fights you want and i i mean of course i i came out with the win so but that was probably my toughest fight mm -hmm. up to date honestly yeah so they were so yeah, i want to ask that, was, that uh i want to ask that 45 second one so like how did that happen or did you knock him out was it a submission like what like what in that 45 uh second? that's quick so man. funny story <laughs> that's yeah that's actually not even my fastest victory oh wow. uh, my fastest victory is actually my fastest victory is actually 24 seconds. Oh my goodness. Uh won that won that 24 seconds TKO. That was in my amateur career. And uh but the 45 second one, it was a submission. I knew the guy had heavy hands. I knew he wasn't that aggressive. So I wanted to be more aggressive for uh first. And um he knew I wanted to wrestle. He knew I wanted to take it to the ground and he kind of just threw a blank body kick and it kind of worked out my favor. And, you know, we went down to the ground and from there it was just, I knew what I can do and I knew what I had. So right. it, it was, it was over pretty quick. Right. <laughs> so yeah. tell me a little bit about your upbringing and like your high school experience. I know, I understand you played football and ran track a little bit. And so, and how did, and, tell, and talk about how did the MMA and, and wrestling and boxing and all that kind of come about as well? Because I know that's not a high school. Uh, so like how did all that kind of yeah. happen? Yeah. Um, so I was actually, I came from Lawton mm -hmm. over to Duncan my sophomore year, I think. Um, and I went to Lawton Eisenhower and man, I'm, I'm not proud of this, but I always got in trouble for fighting. I think the first day of my seventh grade year literally got suspended for fighting. Mm. It was just, you know, it was a part of me just fighting. I don't know what it was. <laughs> um, but the people I was around always wanted to fight. So I was, you know, proud of my environment, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then I ended up going to Duncan, playing football, um, four years there. And like, I was, I'm always been a competitive soul, like competitive nature guy. Like I've always been a competitor, but I've also been like a quiet competitor. I won't ever like just mouth or anything, but I, I'm, I, I silently in my head, I know I'm a competitor. I know I don't want to lose. I know I want to do that. Well, it kind of trans uh, transitioned over to college football. Um, and it, it happened in track, too. Actually, that's why I did track. Like we were talking about earlier, I did the four by eight. And uh, Coach Ledford. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, is he still in Duncan, by no, the way? Yeah, he's still there. Yeah, oh, yeah uh, he was uh, He was actually a track coach. And uh, my best friend, pretty much like my brother, Brandon Richardson, used to make fun of me like you can't do this you can't do track so me being me I was like right, I'm gonna jump on the track I'm gonna say I, I did track and I wasn't the fast the fast one in the group so I did the four by eight uh, and I, actually my first year after my first year we actually went to state in four by eight I think we placed third in state my first year my it was my senior year but um just went to college played some football a hot high pace game fast um of course I had the dream of going to the NFL playing CFL I actually played arena ball after that. And um, I still had that competitive, like, side of me. I want to do something. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, a guy that I worked with, uh, he actually was involved in judo, which is a form of martial arts. And I started getting involved in that. I was, like, 215 at the time. And 
I used to laugh at him about it. I thought it was a joke. You know, I thought martial arts was a joke. I really did. I'll be the first to say it. I was the guy that would go out in a bar and if I was drunk and somebody told me they did karate, you would have to prove to me that it worked. I, I was mm-hmm. I was that dirt bag. I was yeah. that dirt bag. So <laughs> um actually got involved in that with him and you know, I got humbled and it just stuck with me, man. And I like slowly started um just getting good at it. Yeah. I never wanted to fight. I never wanted to compete. Um, I got mixed up in competing due to the fact that somebody signed me up for a tournament, for a jiu-jitsu tournament. Oh, wow. And uh, I didn't want to waste their money, so I was like, oh, I'll do it. Mm. And I was like, okay, this this seems kind of fun. I can stick with this. I can do this. Let's do it. Mm. And I was like, that's all I'll do. And then my very first amateur fight, I actually fought a guy from Duncan named Kerry Hill. Yeah, um, I don't care, yeah. I fought him. Yeah, I fought him my first amateur fight. Probably the worst fight you'll ever see ever. Don't go, don't go watch that, bro. No, it's <laughs> terrible. Uh, uh, it's terrible. But um, and I was like, man, I actually like the feeling of hearing people cheer for me. Mm. It's a drilling rush. I've always been, a, I'm, you know, always been the type to. I don't turn down fights. So why not get paid for this stuff? Why not? You know, it's legal to fight. It's you know, so I stuck with it. And you know, it's brought me to where I am today, man. It's it's uh, it's my full time job. Mm. I'm a full time father. I'm a full time coach. I'm a full time fighter. Um, I, I'm just blessed, man. I really am. All right. So now that you mentioned, you know, your daughter and, and everything, or that you're a father, I know you have a daughter. <laughs> so talk about just being yeah. a dad and and being like in that family atmosphere, and as well as being like a fighter, and, and you know, and because you know, you might come back pretty bruised up and everything. So like. You know what I'm saying? Like how it's being like a father and everything and being a fighter and everything. How does that all kind of go about? Uh, so so when it first kind of happened, when my girlfriend, me and my girlfriend first got together, like she was kind of shaky about it. Yeah. You know, she didn't uh, she didn't quite understand the fight game. She didn't quite understand uh, me chasing my dream, me being this, my career. Mm. So she would kind of get upset at the fact that you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't come spend time with her a lot, or I couldn't do certain things because I had to train. And um, the more she got involved with me, the more we got involved with each other, she started seeing like, okay, like, I understand this, like, you're, you're good at it, you know. And of course, like, you know, I win a fight or something. That's, that's money I get to spend on her. So right, she loves that right. aspect of it. You know, <laughs> but uh, being a father, man, it's awesome because Sophia, she's three years old. Yeah, she's been in. She's literally been in the gym since literally probably she was two months old. Mm-hmm. Um, she actually she does jujitsu with me. She I've seen I've seen your Instagram class. stories and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, she 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 loves it, man. Um, she tries to choke out our dog. <laughs> um, she just yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Um, so to me, like my my girlfriend future fiance and, and my uh daughter they're my wife they keep me going in this mm-hmm. sport um because I, I have so much to give them i, I want to give them the world and, mm-hmm. and i can do that you know um so it it, it really helps me in this career they mm-hmm. keep me going yeah um when times get tough in this you know and during the fight or when i'm cutting weight when i want to give up and training when I'm when I think I'm tired I just think about them and I think about you know I, I'm the provider of the house so it mm. keeps me going and yeah um she hasn't been to any of my fights yet I think she's still too young yeah, yeah it's crazy, crazy. Yeah. crazy yeah yeah um usually when I fight I usually sell out I sell out the place so um I think we'll wait a couple more years I know my girlfriend she, the first time she seen me fight um I actually my ankle got broke and tore some ligaments in it and I still won the fight, but she was like freaking out. And I was like, I still won the fight. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. matter, you know? <laughs> and uh, she was a little, you know, skeptical and I don't want to see you get hurt, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And I'm just like, a this is the life you're, you're a part yeah. of. Yeah. It's a part of it. You know, you're going to, you know, I hope I don't get knocked out or anything, but there's going to be that time where I, I do, there's going to be a time I get choked out, you know, this, it's just a part of it and and now I think she's she's bought into it she understands Mm -hmm. um she understands that part of it she really does so Mm -hmm. uh it it, has helped me a lot throughout the years her becoming more and more used to it 
it's, it's helped a lot. So she, she she's adjusting to it very well. Mm. So what is like a normal training just day, just weekly? Like how does like how do you get prepared for fights? Like can you just talk about just the preparation of being a professional fighter for people who don't um so for me it's a little different because um a lot of fighters what they'll do is their training schedule really devolves uh, like revolves around if they have a fight or not. Mm. Uh, for me, it's different. I, I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. So what I mean by that is I stay on a regular, like my weight's always good. Um, I'm always eating properly. I'm always doing my strength conditioning. I'm always in shape. Um, I usually wake up around six o'clock in my strength conditioning in. Um, and then I'll teach a kickboxing class, a women's kickboxing class. From there, I'll either go to jujitsu practice or wrestling practice. Um, if it's a Monday or Tuesday after jujitsu or wrestling, I'll have my kickboxing Muay Thai practice. And then we'll spar like five rounds after that. And then um, after that, I'll probably run about four miles. And then um, I'll, I'll maybe have like an hour and a half to two hours of chill. I'll chill with my daughter or something or my girlfriend. And then I start coaching around 5.15 till about eight o'clock at night. And so it's like that literally every day, except mm -hmm. Fridays. Um, Fridays, I'll normally... I'll normally chill until we have hard sparring sessions. So we'll have hard sparring sessions. It'll start about 7.30. We'll do our technique and then we'll spar for like an hour straight. And mm. uh, it's pretty, it's pretty heavy, man. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't sit out rounds. I don't believe in sitting out rounds during sparring, no matter how tired I am, no matter how hurt I think I am. I just, I push the pace. It's a suicide pace. I like to call it. Um, I, I like to push myself beyond the limits because if you train hard, the fight is easy. Right, right. So, uh, you know, I just, I'm consistently training. I wanted to have a day off today, but I went to open mat this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did you, I did like five, ten, five or six jujitsu rolls this morning. And, you know, this is my lifestyle. So yeah, I'll, yeah. I'm always training. I'm always training. Yeah, I feel you. So what, what are some of the things that you know you have to work on in order to hit that next step? You know, like what is the next step for you? What are some things you have to work on? Uh, my mental, uh, my mm -hmm. mental game. Um, you, you have to be very mentally strong to be a professional fighter or just a fighter in general. Um, when you make that walk to the cage, man, there's so many emotions. Um, you're just like, man, what happens if I go out there and don't do this? Who's going to be mad at me? Will somebody be upset? Will they think I mm -hmm. suck? It's just so many emotions, but you can't get caught up in that. Right. So the more you start to fight and uh, all this good stuff and you, you want to make it to the highest level, which is UFC. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't doubt yourself on that level because right, once yes. you get under them lights, it's, it's go time. It's go time. And if you're doubting yourself or if you have any mental breakdowns in that cage, it's going to show and it's going right. to be the worst thing right. ever. So, you know, so uh, that's what, mm. what's that? Oh, I said, go ahead. I was listening. <laughs> oh, uh, so for me, it's all about uh, my mental state. Yeah. Uh, believing in that I, I am good. Believing I can go to the next level. Believing in that you're gonna have bad days. You're gonna have off days in training. Right. Um, yeah. But come back. The, come back. The, <laughs> yeah. Come back the next day, ready to go. How yeah. can you? You know, don't dwell on it. It's over. Now, how can you come back better the next day? Mm -hmm. You, you know, it's about consistency, you know, right. you, you, it's just what it is. Like you said, you know, your basketball team, some days they may have an off day, but they got to come back better the next day. And they know that. And that's a part of being mentally stable in the fight game. Just because you didn't hit them the first time, don't get upset about it. Just because they hit you or you can't be like, oh man, that hurt. Like yeah. you got to, <laughs> okay, I got hit. Yeah. Now I got to return. I got to return with a bigger combo. I got to get my head off the center line. You got so much going on. You have no time to just think like, dude, what, what, what just happened? Like, because mm -hmm. as soon as you do, it's over. Right. So it, it's, I, it's over. It's a fast paced game. Yeah. So I want to, I really want to know personally, I haven't had this wrote down. I want to know. So how long does it take to get that call to the UFC? Because I know, you know, very few people make it in that realm. Mm -hmm. you know? And so like what all decisions have to go into that and, when Dana go, hey, Chris, I want you to come up. Like, like, what is all that stuff? Like, how does it all come about? Um, it comes about uh, really 
building yourself. Uh, I have a pretty stellar amateur career. Mm -hmm. I have a pretty good following. Um, I, I, I hold myself up to professional ways. I've never missed weight. I've always been a high ticket seller. Um, I've fought game good opponents. Um, it's all about kind of like, it's a business at the end of the day. Yeah, right. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, who can get you there? Who do you know? Um, my management team, Sucker Punch, uh, Brian Hamper, Sucker Punch is one of the best uh, management teams in the, in the game right now. We have over 40 UFC fighters on our roster, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, a bunch of Bellator fighters on our roster. Uh, so they're they're actually in the mix of working with some stuff I really can't talk about right now, but yeah. <laughs> uh, some big things should be happening. I, I'm praying uh, if it's my time, it's my time. If it's not, I'll just keep training to be the best that I can. But um, to answer your question, it's all about timing yeah. and um, how well you're preparing yourself because that call can come anytime. Right, 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 right. That that you know there there's been guys that they're supposed to fight one weekend and five days later they get a call, hey, we need this short notice fight for this guy in the UFC to be your UFC debut. And you're like, oh my God, okay. <laughs> I think it just happened. I can't say his last name, a guy named Chris something. He fought, um, oh man, uh, they call him Sugar Sean. He, he just fought uh, UFC. And this guy was supposed to fight for another promotion, a local promotion. And they called him up on three days notice to fight this guy. And he took it. He got beat up pretty bad, but it's just things like that. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. Mm -hmm. If you know you're a prospect like me, um, I'm five and oh, I know I can get that call to contender series. I know I could make my UFC debut soon on an undercard. I, I yeah. got to be ready. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's one of the things you have to be ready. You can't, mm -hmm. Oh, you ready to take this fight? Oh man, my weight. I'm like 10 pounds over than what I really am. You'll probably never get that call again. Right. 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 Absolutely. So uh, I see your nickname was the problem. So like, how did that like who like came up with that like the problem? Well, that's a pretty cool little nickname. So, like, so, uh, how, it, so how did that all come about? It actually came from my uh, my old coach when I first started, uh, Cortez Coleman, uh, Bellator vet. He was on. Uh, he was he fought a fight on Ultimate Fighter to try to get in the house, that fighter house, but it didn't go his way. Um, but he actually gave me that that. Um, that nickname because he was with me the first couple of years of my career and he started seeing the growth in me and he just started seeing that like dude you can either outstrike somebody knock somebody out or you can take them down and beat them up like that's a problem like in you know the U.S. the MMA game it's very few guys you can see are very versatile guys that can wrestle guys that can do jujitsu guys that can box and he started seeing that I can do all of that I could be a I could just be a you know all-around fighter and so he started calling me that and he was like, yeah, that's just your nickname. And it kind of stuck with me. I didn't want a nickname until I felt like I deserved one. Right, and yeah, I feel like I still yeah. don't deserve one. <laughs> like <laughs> I want to earn it, but um, that's how it came about. And it, it just kind of stuck. So I was like, mm -hmm. all right, I'll just leave it. Yeah. So. <laughs> so what are some of the guys, you know, either, you know, now or just that's in the MMA now past MMA fighters, like who are some of the guys that you really look up to you know idolize yourself after like, is there anybody you know you're a welterweight right um yes sir yeah so is there, um, anybody, is there anybody really, in the where you just look up to him like wow like he's great like yeah, i would love to have a career similar to his or you know what i'm saying like is there anybody you just look up to yeah uh kamara uzman um to me I, I try to mark my game after his i'm gonna be honest with you everybody fears his wrestling mm -hmm. and he's he's good at jujitsu um, everybody knows he can wrestle. Everybody knows you, he gets on the he gets you on the ground. You know you're screwed. But he also has powerful hands and he can strike. Um, he's not scared to bang, and that's what I kind of try to mold my game after yeah. his. Mm -hmm. um, he's I don't know. He's just that fighter that I don't see him losing anytime soon in the welterweight division mm -hmm. because he's very versatile. You don't want to wrestle with him, but he hits so hard that you you just you can't stand there and try to bang with them right. so you have to like you have to pick and choose and it's hard to beat somebody like that mm -hmm. and that's what you know i look up to he's a welterweight i'm a welterweight um i actually trained with one of his uh one of his close buddies uh ray zach abdul which is a middleweight in the ufc he actually fights august 21st in ufc um his last fight i was his main wrestling training partner 
me and him wrestled every day, every day, preparing him for his UFC fight. And uh, I became close to him. Uh, I've trained with Kevin Holland. Um, my, my coach, Mark De La Rosa, is actually in the UFC right now. His wife's in the UFC. Um, I'm surrounded by UFC fighters. I train with UFC fighters every day, legitimately on the roster. But Kamara Usman is someone I look up to and I try to mold my game after for sure. Yeah, for sure. I feel like, I just feel like it, it, it just fits me. It fits mm-hmm. me well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I know you play football, you know, backtracking just a little bit, backtracking a little bit. So I know you play mm-hmm. football and you played at ECU. So did football yes, help you as far as MMA life or like, you know, taking that aggression out and, and stuff? And like, how did football and stuff help you prepare for this, if it did at all? Uh, it definitely helped me a lot. It helped me as far as being explosive yeah. and uh, not not being scared of going with anyone um, mm. in football. I was a DB, so yeah. you had to do yeah. one-on-ones. You had your man coverage. You were in mano a mano. You had no help. So it's kind of like that in the, in the cage. You don't have any help, man. You just, you, you got to go. You know what I'm saying? So it, it helped me a lot uh, mentally, uh, physically, just being explosive most football guys that transition from football to mma they're some of the most dangerous guys because like we're just very dangerous mm-hmm. we're already strong and yeah we just don't care about nothing right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're already ready to fight so i feel you so i know 2020 was a crazy crazy time with everything that happened so what are some of the things 2020 taught you and how did in another part of that how did COVID affect all the stuff that you had going on. Oh man, 2020 was tough. Uh, of course, COVID hit, and I was actually bartending at the time at Chili's when I lived in Oklahoma, mm-hmm. and uh, we got shut down. We had to go to to goes only, so that cut that cut you know money down by big time. Um, I had accepted a fight. I think COVID, they started breaking, they started like closing stuff down in March. I was supposed to fight in April. Mm. And uh, so I was like, man, I, I really need to fight. I really need this money. I need this sponsorship money. I just want to fight. Mm. And um, they closed, like we weren't able to fight. They closed the gyms down. We weren't able to train. Well, <laughs> I was sneaking into the gym. We had an upstairs gym with mats at the time. And it was like me and two other guys, we would sneak up to the gym every day. And it was like an Anne Frank hideout. It really was. Yeah. You had to go upstairs. You had like, it was crazy. But it was like three of us every day. We snuck up there and we did our jujitsu. We did our sparring and we just, it just made me realize like how, how much I want this because right, I right, knew to do that, yeah. a lot of, yeah. man, I knew a lot of people weren't training. I knew they make excuses and you know, I, I kind of downplayed COVID when it first happened. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I didn't, I wasn't a believer in it. I didn't think it was, you know, that bad. But, you know, I definitely take it serious now, for sure. Yeah, it's crazy. But, it's um, bad. Yeah, it, it definitely really didn't stop me. I was still working out. I had a buddy. He had some weights at his house. So I did all I could do there. And then um, I was still training. I was still outside running. Um yeah, I just I ran around town and it was like a ghost town. So mm-hmm. it was kind of yeah. peaceful, but it really didn't stop me too much. It just made me mentally stronger and yeah. it made me like I know I know no other fighters are doing this right now. Right. I, I know they're not sneaking into their gyms. I know they're not putting in the work. Um they're probably just using this time to be lazy. So mm-hmm. it uh it actually I feel like it made me a stronger person. Right. So um you do, uh, do you have any upcoming uh, fights and uh, and future plans to talk about kind of like what you're gearing towards now and, and any upcoming fights? Um, where I'm at my career right now is uh, we're, we're being very smart, um, picking the smartest fights. We don't want to go out there and, and fight a guy, you know, I shouldn't be fighting and potentially take a loss that I shouldn't. And that mm-hmm. put me two or three fights back from where I need to be. Um, mm-hmm. I think I'm one call away. Uh, only God knows his, his, his time and his, it's his blessing, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I'm looking to either fight in October or potentially December. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, I'm just, I'm perfecting my crafts every day. So when I do get that call, I'm ready to take that high level fight. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to accept the challenge. A lot of people in my position, they'd be, you know, 
I'm just going to wait until I get that fight. I'm going to wait until, you know, I have a camp. No, I, I can't do that. All right. All right. I, I want to, when, when they call, I just want to be able to have all my weapons ready. And then they, I get them. If I get an opponent, then I'm, I'm ready to put all my weapons in line to use against him. You know? mm -hmm. So uh, that's kind of what we're waiting on my management. They're working hard for me to get on something. Um, I've gotten messages from them. I mean, they're they're definitely working. It's just a lot of it's a process, man. It's a tough business. Yeah. Everybody wants to be in the UFC, so right, 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 right. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like it's like the NFL, NBA, man. You know, it's 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 a waiting game, but I'm definitely gonna be ready when I get that call. Mm -hmm. So here are the bonus questions. Before we start the bonus, do you have any questions for me or anything? Before we start, I always ask. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I, I seen that you're from Duncan. Yeah, I seen that you're from Duncan as well, man. Uh, explain that experience from going, you know, Duncan being a small town, and I seen you play collegiate basketball. How was how did that transition go for you? Because I know how it went for me, but I want to know how it went from somebody else. Yeah, so it was cool for me. You know, it was a lot different position wise because at Duncan I played the pretty much the three through the five, really. You know what I mean? And then. Mm -hmm. Being at in college, I had to play more to two, three, you know what I'm saying? Like in that little area. So I had to get my ball handling up and everything. Um, I mean, Duncan's cool. Like, it's great. You know what I mean? I learned a lot, you know, um, but just being from a small town, you know, it's a lot different. You know, um, luckily, I'm only an hour and a half. I just need to stay in the city. You know what I mean? So it's really not that, mm -hmm. you know, bad. But I mean, Duncan did help because, you know, we are 5A, you know, you know, and I played summer mm -hmm. ball helped me a lot playing against good people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and um, so that was definitely a good that we, I got that we, you know, I went to a 5A school and got to play, you know, the Lawtons of the world, R. Moores, you know what I mean? Even Alts is, yeah, I mean, they're yeah. good. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it was, it was, it was, it was good. I'm happy that I, I'm happy Duncan's the big school. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, what year did you get? I graduated 08. Oh, wait, dang. Yeah, I graduated in 19. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Cool. It was, it was, uh, it's a lot that's changed since then, man. I actually, man, I actually haven't been to Duncan in so long, and but I've seen that they, they rebuilt the high school. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah. And all this stuff. And I was just like, man, that's crazy. I, I don't know about y'all, but we used to hang out at Burger King a lot. I feel like a lot of Comanche people would come down, Belma people. <laughs> Bray people would come down and we would all hang out at Burger King. That was that was our Saturday night fun. Yeah. I don't know about what happened now, but <laughs> a lot of things happened at that Burger King parking lot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, people still go out there to the stage parking the Burger King parking lot. And yeah, that yeah, yeah, it's still pretty much the same stuff. It's the small town stuff, you know, because everybody just chilling. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh -huh. So you have any more questions or anything for you to pause? No, 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 no. Right. Not the moment, man. <laughs> cool. Because some people have both loads of questions. So, you know, like they usually wait to the end. So I kind of, like, hey, like, do you want to ask anything before we get going? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, all right. My first bonus question is uh, dead or alive, five dinner guests to have, you know, obviously dinner with <laughs> five dinner guests. It could be anybody. Say that one more, five, that one more time. You uh, are alive. Uh, five dinner guests, dead or alive. Five dinner guests. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it could be anybody. Anybody, famous family members, anybody, anybody you want. Okay. I'm gonna say number one, D Wade, because it's my favorite NBA player. Mm -hmm. Number two, I'm gonna say Michael Vick, my favorite NFL player. I would have to uh, number three, Kevin Gates. He's one mm -hmm. of my favorite artists right now. I, I would love to talk to him. Um, very, very smart, man. Very smart. Yeah. Number four, I would have to say uh, Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Um, I actually just got him tatted on me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I got one. It's really, that's, that's dope. Yeah, I just got it. That's dope. I got Malcolm X. I got and, Malcolm X right here. And I got Jackie Robinson. I just peel and I got Jackie Robinson. I got Martin. And I have to get a John Lewis Barack Obama one Monday. So I'm getting that That's back. Dope. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. Love and I think my fifth one, I would have to, I would have to say, I'm gonna go with Nipsey Hustle, man. Nipsey. Mm. That's a great guess. I'm gonna, great I'm gonna guess. go with Nipsey Hustle. So one artist to yeah. listen to yeah. the rest of your life. One artist. 
Dude, I'm gonna go. This is gonna be awkward, but it's too different. I'm gonna go either the weekend or Kevin Gates, bro. Mm, the weekend. I'm 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 a, I'm a huge the weekend. I've been a weekend fan, but like before he got mainstream. And yeah. Kevin Gates, I relate to his music so much. Mm. I listen to Kevin Gates literally every day. <laughs> uh-huh. I I can't get. I, I don't listen to a lot of the new music. I don't yeah. know what it is. Um, I just recently started. Who is it? What's his name? L- Little baby. Yeah, little baby. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I recently just started listening to him. I heard him on a, a Drake track, and I was like, "Dog, this dude is dope." So yeah. I kind of started following up with him. <laughs> but uh, I'm really not into a bunch of the new rappers. But Kevin Gates, man, I I can listen to him morning to night, man. That's, that's you listen to before that's a fight. My artist. Before a fight or anything, man. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I definitely listen to a lot of Kevin Gates before a fight. Uh, he's he's definitely one of my favorite artists. Or I don't know, man. When it comes to before a fight, I play a different, a lot of different songs because it's a lot of different emotions. Right, right. right. So for for about five minutes, I may be trying to relax myself. So I play some R and B. Then I'm like, dude, I'm getting too relaxed. I need to play something to right, get me get up. You going, yeah. I play Kevin Gates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, I'm getting too crunk. I need right. to calm down. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. waste my adrenaline. So, <laughs> <laughs> so then I'll be listening to something else. It's, it's crazy, man. It's 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 weird. Yeah, I feel you. 